Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about the history skills that you need to pass National 4 and National 5 history. We're going to talk a lot about sources today. A major part of history is the interpretation of sources. A source is a piece of evidence that tells us about the past. Sources can be diary entries, textbooks, letters, but they can also be so much more. A source will either be primary or secondary. A primary source is a source that was produced at the time of the event you're studying, for example, a letter from the trenches. Secondary sources are produced after the time of the event, for example, a textbook that was produced 10 or 20 years later. For National 4 and 5 history, you have to be able to interpret and analyse sources in different ways. Today I'm going to show you how to do this. One of the ways that you might be asked to interpret sources is through the compare the sources question. This is a fully source-based question, so you don't need any of your own knowledge to answer this, and they are worth four marks. Now, there's a really specific structure that you need to follow in order to get those four marks. We have to give an overall comparison, then a simple comparison, a developed comparison with quotes, a second simple comparison, and a second developed comparison with quotes. I'm going to talk you through how we do that now. So here's an example of a compare the sources question. As you can see, we've got two sources and then we have a question at the bottom that says compare the views of sources A and B about Nazi views on race. So both of these sources are talking about the Nazi views of race. And what we need to do is decide if the sources agree or disagree. Once we've made that decision, we then follow this structure to start getting our marks. So overall, sources A and B agree or disagree about whatever the question is asking. The sources agree or disagree on, source A says, and then source B agrees or disagrees by saying. And then we repeat this step here two times. So if we were to look at these sources, we know that they're asking us about Nazi views on race. Therefore, the sources will be talking about Nazi views on race. But we need to decide if they agree or disagree. So the easiest way to do this is to start by looking at source A and to pick a quote from source A that we can then see if one matches from source B or if source B is talking about something different. So I'm going to pick this quote here. There could be no argument that the Aryan people of Northern Europe were superior in every way. So source A is telling us that the Aryan people were in fact the most superior race. We now need to look at source B and see if it agrees with that statement or if it disagrees. And by reading through it, we can see here that it's talking about the Aryans of Scandinavia and Germany. So this source tells us the Aryans of Germany and Scandinavia were the master race. So that is an agreement between the sources. Source A is saying that the people of Northern Europe were the superior, and source B is saying that the Aryans of Germany and Scandinavia were the master race. So those sources are both agreeing there. So what we then do is we start to answer our question. So we start with our overall comparison. So sources A and B agree about Nazi views on race. So that's an overall comparison. We then give a simple comparison. The sources agree about the Aryan race being superior. That is just what the quotes tell us, that they think the Aryan race are superior. And then we start our developed comparison. We start by taking the quote from source A. Source A says there could be no argument that the Aryan people of Northern Europe are superior in every way. And source B agrees by saying the Aryans of Germany and Scandinavia were the master race. So that is our developed comparison there. So here we have three marks already. Three out of four so far. So we just really need one more mark to get our full marks. But what we're going to do is we're going to do another simple and another developed comparison so that we can hopefully get full marks. So if we were to look at the sources again, we now need to pick a second quote from source A and back that up with a second source, a second quote from source B. So source A, it says that it was logical for the superior people like this should be in control of all other races. And we need to find something in source B that then backs this up. And here we have at the bottom, this gave the superior races the authority to rule over the people of the world. They are both saying that the superior race should be the one that is in control. So we then do a second simple comparison. The sources also agree on the control of the Aryans. And then source A says it was logical that superior people like this should be in control of all our people. And source B agrees 
by saying this gave the superior races the authority to rule over the peoples of the world. And that is our second developed comparison. So when we put that all together, we technically are getting five out of four here because we've done five sentences. But that just makes sure that if we were to mess up on one of those marks, we could still get full marks. So this question would get us full marks, which is fantastic. A second way that you might be asked to interpret sources is through the how fully question. This question will either ask you how fully a source describes or how fully a source explains something about the topic you're studying. With this question, you have to give an overall judgment, quotes from the source and your own knowledge. And these questions are worth six marks. Again, we have a structure to follow to help us get those marks. We do an overall judgment, overall source A, B or C, quite fully, and then describes or explains whatever the question is asking. Source A says, give a quote, this shows or tells us, and we do that three times. However, the source fails to mention, and three things the source doesn't tell us. So that's where our own knowledge comes in. So here's an example of this question. Source C describes some of the effects of hyperinflation in Germany in 1923. Source C is there. And it's asking us how fully does source C describe the effects of hyperinflation. So it's a described question here, so you don't have to give too much of an explanation for each of our quotes. So to do this, you start off by saying overall, source C quite fully describes the effects of hyperinflation. And there's our judgment, which is great. We then look at the source and we pick out three quotes that the source tells us that describe the effects of hyperinflation. So we just have to read through it and then pick out three things that are telling us how hyperinflation affected the people of Germany. Okay, so we start by reading it and as soon as we find something, we can highlight it to say this is what the effects of hyperinflation were. So in 1923, an economic crisis had developed in Germany. In little more than a year, hyperinflation had done appalling damage. It reduced money to nothing. It reduced to nothing money saved over decades of hard work. People paid in restaurants before the eight. That's a really important effect of hyperinflation. Others carried their savings to the bank in wheelbarrows. Many Germans blamed the Weimar government and fear and despair became the daily experience. Now these are three different quotes that all tell us how hyperinflation affected the people of Germany. So those are three quotes that we can use in our answer. So we start with source A says people paid in restaurants before they ate and then we have to use our own words to describe that. So this is showing us that the price of a meal would increase as you ate so it was better before you actually ate. So it also says other carried their savings to the bakers and wheelbarrows. This shows that people needed lots of money to just buy some baked goods and they had to carry it all at once. And source A also says fear and despair became the daily experience. This shows that people were extremely worried about what was happening to their country. So that would get us three marks because that's three quotes that we have said in our own words what they mean. We then have to say three things that the source doesn't tell us. So three things that we've learned in class that are not mentioned in the source. So we could say something like, however, the source fails to mention that children would use money as materials for arts and craft as it was worthless. The source also fails to mention that workers could receive wage rises two or three times a day. And the source also fails to mention that the old people who had lots of savings became poor overnight as their life savings were now worth nothing. So again, that's our three points of recall and that would get us three marks. So when we put this answer all together, we would get full marks because we've got our three points from the source and we've got our three points of recall which all answer the question on how fully the source describes the effects of hyperinflation on Germany. Now, the third way that you could be asked to interpret sources is the evaluate the usefulness question. This is the final type of source question where you need to decide on how useful a source is. This question is worth five marks and you have to base your answer on lots of different things. You have to think about who wrote the source, when it was written, what it says and what it does not say. Now again, we have a structure to help us get those marks, which is fantastic. This structure is a little bit longer. 
So overall, source A, B or C is quite useful as, again, taking the word in the question, but has some limitations. Then we go on to talk about who it was written by. Source A, B or C was written by, and this is useful because, when it was written, this is more or less useful because, source A, B or C says, this is useful because it's accurate information, however, the source fails to mention. And you do those last things two times as well. So here's an example of a evaluate the usefulness question. So as you can see, we've got source A, and it's from the Diary of a Berliner, written in 1923. Then we've got the source, and then we're asked to evaluate the usefulness as evidence of the effects of hyperinflation on Germany. So we start off this one by giving our judgment again. So overall, source A is quite useful as evidence of the effects of hyperinflation in Germany, but has some limitations. So we've just reworded the question here. Now we need to have a look at it and we need to see who wrote it and when it was written so we can comment on those. So this source was written by a Berliner and it was written in 1923. Now from our working class, we know that Berlin is in Germany and we know that hyperinflation was affecting Germany in 1923. So we can start to form an answer about that. So source A was written by a Berliner. This makes it useful as they were in Germany at the time of hyperinflation and so would have seen the first hand effects of hyperinflation. So that's us talking about the author and we'd get our author mark there because it explains why it's good that this source was written by somebody who was there. And then we've said source A was written in 1923. This makes it useful as it was when hyperinflation was affecting Germany and so the information should be relevant and accurate. So we've said there why the timing of 1923 is important. We've explained that it was at the time of hyperinflation and so that information is relevant. We then have to look at what the source is actually saying. Okay, so we need to find two quotes that help explain the effects of hyperinflation on Germany. So just by looking here, we can see that the source says even an additional minute meant an increase in price. That is telling us how fast hyperinflation, hyperinflation was affecting Germany. And it also talks about having to buy things quickly because prices would increase by the time you walk away from the shop. Um, the money needed to buy the smallest item had long become too heavy for trouser pockets as well. That's telling us that people couldn't carry the money that they needed. Now, when you find your quotes, it's very easy to pick up the marks on this question. All you have to do is say, source A says, then give your quote. So here, even an additional minute meant an increase in price. And this is useful as it's accurate information. That's all you have to say here to get that mark. And we do that two times. So source A also says, the money needed to buy, the smallest item had long become too heavy for trouser pockets. This is useful as it's accurate information. Really easy to pick up our two source marks here, which is great. Then once we've done that, we have to talk about things that the source doesn't tell us. So using our recall, our class knowledge here. However, the source is less useful as it fails to mention that life savings were made worthless overnight. And the source is also less useful as it fails to mention that workers received wage rises sometimes twice a day. That's two things that we know to be true because we've learned them in class. Therefore, we get our two recall marks here. And here we have our overall answer. That would get us five out of five when we put it all together. So we've got our overall judgment. We've got our author. We've got our time. We've got our two sources. And we've got our two recall. So that was the three different questions that you could get asked to answer in the National Four and the National Five exam papers about how to interpret sources. Hopefully these structures have helped you today. If they haven't, there are still some different resources online that you can look at to get some more help and some more information on these different types of questions. So we can use BBC Bite Size. That has lots of information that will help with recall, that will help with knowing if your source information is correct. And we've also got Mr. Mars History, who is a history teacher who has created a YouTube channel to help students across Scotland with their structures for the National 4 and 5 exam style questions for history. But of course, you can always speak to your teacher as well, who will always be willing to mark your questions and to answer any questions that you have on how to 
answer these types of questions. So thank you for listening today. Hope it has been helpful. And if you need any more help, please do speak to your teacher.